Hello, and welcome to this Caspio training video series. My name is Joel, and in this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to create multiple users for an application and control what data they can access and manipulate with record level security. We'll also learn how to set up a filtered dropdown based on an authenticated user's information. So let's get started. So we're starting from the Caspio home screen here. We'll go ahead and navigate to the app we want to work in. And you'll notice this app is familiar. It is the search and report data page that we authenticated in the password protection series. So here's this. We'll go ahead and check out the details page here and look at some of the changes we're going to be doing. Basically, what we've created uh, in past videos in this search and report is a single user uh, cloud-based contacts app where you can come on, check out your contacts, uh, put in a status, and put some notes in. Um, in this tutorial, we'll be taking this same data page, but we're going to be creating a multi-user uh, application that is uh, protected by record level security so that one admin can then uh, assign contacts to different people within the organization. So we want to change this simple single-user sales-only application to a multi-user app that will actually facilitate management and keep users focused on their own tasks or customers. Uh, by creating this record level security for users, an admin can then assign customers uh, and then only those customers will be able to be seen by whatever user based on what they put in in their authentication or what they log in with. We'll also be adding a filtered drop-down status here that is totally dependent on the department of the given user. So let's go ahead and get started. Check out our tables first. Uh, we're still going to be using our contacts demo uh, table, of course. Uh, so we'll go ahead and take a look and see what changes have been made uh, to this. There really hasn't been any changes. The only thing we've done is the admin would be you if you created the app and it was your employees or other people in your organization could then come in, check out your contacts, and then in the assign to field here, add in names. So that's basically all I've done here is I've put some names in for employees. Now we'll go and actually take a look at our employees table. This is going to be the new authentic authentication table we use. Uh, if you remember from our the password protection series, we created a, a small table with one single user and we authenticated that table. Uh, in this case, we've created a whole, these are, this is a list of our employees with the email as the user, as a username, and the password, of course, as the password to log in. And then we also have a department uh, field here that will be used to, uh, for our filter drop down uh, status drop down. Now that we've seen that, there's one other table that we're going to be working with, and we'll look at this a little bit uh, in depth as we get deeper into this, but it is our lookup status. And it's basically a lookup table. It's very simple. It only has two fields, a status and a department. So this is going to be directly in correlation with our employees table. Depending on the department that a given user logs in with, or whatever, of course it's going to be their department, uh, there's going to be statuses that are available to them. For example, if somebody from sales logs in, they're not going to see these statuses from uh, marketing and accounting and vice versa. They'll only see the drop downs that actually mean something to them and their department. All right, so let's get into the data page here. Our authenticated search and report is what we created. We'll keep with a tabular layout. So go ahead and click next. And we can go ahead and keep our data source, of course, to the contacts demo. That's where all of our contacts are and our data. Uh, the style's good. We'll go ahead and enable advanced options. It's always nice to enable advanced options uh, because there are things that you can customize more uh, with that selected. Here's the big one now. Uh, we're going to restrict access, but we're going to change our authentication. So our single user new authentication is going to be changed now to the employees table that we've created. Very simple. We use the same 
The same ideas we used in that in the new authentication we use on employees. It's just multiple. So we'll go next. Now, instead of having our users actually search like they do in our original search and report, where you actually have to search through all these things, it's great if it's just one user. But if we want to make we want to make sure that only uh, the users only see the data that we want them to see. So we will click on the filter data based on your predefined criteria. And that'll be our predefined criteria. And we'll also be uh, selecting record level security. The identity we're going to use is the employee ID. And it automatically goes to assign to. And that's what we're going to use for the matching field uh, in the current data source. So in our contacts uh, table, in our contacts demo table, there's an assign to field, and it will directly point to this employee name. So we'll go next. Uh, we won't worry too much about selecting any filtering fields, even though here's a great place to, uh, once we do get our status going, you can put status over there and then create uh, a filter by saying, say, if it was for sales, if there's a closed contact, to not show that contact anytime they log in because it's already closed. We'll leave that for now. And here's our results page, and it's pretty much the same um, as before. These are what's going to first show up as soon as they log in without the actual search form. Okay, and these are all fine. We'll make sure that our email is an email link. That way we can just click on the email and uh, email our contacts from just the, the results page. Go next, and we'll leave the search order as it is. And we'll leave the details. Yes, we want a details page. Here's our details. Now that we're the configure details page field screen of our search and report wizard, uh, we want to go ahead and take care of our status that we were talking about. Right now, we have a drop down, which is correct. Uh, and custom values selected, which, like we said, for one person is fine. These were cust the custom values we put in, and these are, this, is, this is the display, and these are the values that will actually be entered into our table. But because we're doing record level security and we have different departments, different people from different departments, we want to make sure that they're only seeing the statuses that actually are relevant to their department. So we're going to go into both. We are going to use a lookup or table view, but we're also going to add some custom values as well. So we're going to click both. And our lookup table is lookup status. Status and status is correct and sort by display. Then we'll go to security. And we'll limit the lookup values based on a user identity. In this case, we'll be using department and department for matching the field and look in the lookup data source. So we want both of these set on department so that when a person logs in and they go to their details page, that depending on what their department is, those are the values they're going to see. And we'll go to our custom values, and we're going to go ahead and get rid of these old, these old custom values because we don't need them. We'll leave the select because that's nice to have up top, but we're going to get rid of all these other uh, custom values because they'll automatically be brought in from our lookup table. All right, that looks good. And you'll also remember we created a stamping by way of authentication uh, in the last video of the password protection series, and that was the modified by. And because we're not using that authentication table anymore, that auth field is not correct anymore. Instead of just name, we're using employee. So we're going to do employee name. And that's the name of the field that's actually in our authentication table. And we can finish. All right, so now that we're finished there, we'll go ahead and take a look at what we've done. So as you can see here, because we use a new authentication, it was for email and then the password, like we saw in the employees table. So let's take one of those employees. I have one here, Marjorie. And Marjorie's email is mh, there it is, at caspio.com. 
and her password is Marjorie Pass. So we'll go ahead and log in. And these are the four contacts that have been assigned to her from the main admin. So we'll go ahead and take a look. And it's good to know that Marjorie is actually in the sales department. So when you look at her status, you only see the sales options. Okay, and so that's that. We'll go ahead and log out and take a look at another employee, Daniel. So his email is dr at Caspia. There it is. And it's Daniel Pass for his password. And we'll log in. And it's good to know that Daniel is actually in marketing. So you'll notice that there's actually six records here. There was only four for Marjorie. So we'll go and take a look at his details of this contact. And you'll notice that his status is different. And it only has the feedback, action required, and closed that relate to marketing. For additional videos and training material, please visit howto.caspio.com. Thanks for watching.